You know, I'm sure you know that this... We started getting involved now, you know. Vaksir is very, very important to go to the mikveh. The mikveh is water from heaven, untouched, pure rainwater. And, uh, you know, not only our body needs washing, my soul needs washing too from time to time, right? The world doesn't know how to wash my soul. If God wouldn't have said that on the Torah, I wouldn't know how to do it. But there is a mikveh, that means... Thank God, most good cities, there is somewhere. People got together and they organized it. Mama should filter things to the roof. And Bach um, it's very strong. At least I grew up with that, I mean. At least, okay, if you cannot go every day, but Friday you have to go for Shabbos. Got to wash your soul off. Anyway. So whenever I come to a city, I travel around the world a little bit. I come to a city on Friday, I call up the synagogue. Do you have a mikveh by any remote chance? Sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. What can you do? I'm coming to a city somewhere without mentioning names, somewhere in the Wild West. And uh, yes, there is a mikveh. Unbelievable. But usually when I go to a mikveh in this Wild West cities, I'm the only one who was there maybe in the last hundred years. <laughs> You know, one time I called up the synagogue and I said, do you have a mikveh? You say, what? <laughs> I said, listen, you know, yes or no? I mean, I don't want to hurt your feelings. He says, wait a minute. Another man comes to the phone. And I say the same thing. Do you have a mikveh? He says, what? <laughs> I say, tell me yes or no. You know, he says, wait a minute. <laughs> Finally, about... I don't know how many people come to the phone. Fine. I said, listen, do me a favor. You know, tell me yes or no. I'm not here. Just said, let me tell you something. We built a mikveh 15 years ago. And you're the first person who ever asked to go to the <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't believe it. <laughs> Mazel well tov. Anyway. So, I'm in that way out city. Friday afternoon, I'm calling up the synagogue. Yes, there was a mikveh. Okay, I'm going there. And um, I'm just about leaving. A person walks in and looks real coarse. You know, it doesn't look like a person who... I don't know what, real coarse, right? With a big cowboy hat in Texas. It was in Texas. And uh, he's going to the mikveh. <laughs> I'm sure you made a mistake. But anyway, no. And he turns to me in real, real Yiddish, you know, not American Yiddish. You can see he's from Europe, right? He says to me, huh, what are you doing here, you know? <laughs> I'm like, crazy. I didn't want to say back, what are you doing here? And I said, you know, obviously, we're here. <laughs> Um, I said, what's your story? You know, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, there's a saying before, everything's written on the faith. You know, most of the time it's written on the faith. You can have a little sense of it. It doesn't fit. So he says, wait, I'll tell you later. Okay, I'm waiting, he's going to the mikveh, he's coming out. Officer, drive me back to my hotel. And this is the story. He says, I want you to know you see, usually when you, a person goes on Friday to the mikveh, keeps Shabbos, right? Because you don't go Sunday to the mikveh to keep Monday, right? Yes. You don't go Monday to the mikveh for a beautiful Tuesday. Friday, you go to the mikveh to have a very exalted Shabbos. So he says, most probably you assume that they keep Shabbos. You're mistaking. He says, sometimes I keep Shabbos. And to be very honest with you, sometimes I don't.